It's a surprisingly clear day in Skopje. In winter, it's rare to see the city from up here. So Elena took advantage. She put on her hiking boots and bought a ticket to Vadno in the hills. Surrounded by these mountains, the capital of this small Balkan state is one of the most polluted cities in the world. You cannot escape from this pollution. It makes me really anxious, and especially in winter when you can even feel the smell. Many people are feeling this um, air pollution anxiety, I would call it, because it's really scary to know that you are literally breathing cancer. Even this mountain is no longer an escape for Elena. There's proof just a few hundred meters further. To make room for this pipeline, hundreds of trees had to be chopped down. I can remember this place being really a beautiful forest, but it's not a beautiful forest anymore. I'm 25 years old now, and if I could, in the last five years only, see so much devastation of the nature, I really wonder what would, what would I see in 50 years from now. I see this as a suicide, as a collective suicide. Stefan Bogoev wants things to change. He's the youngest mayor in the country. The Social Democrat is out campaigning for his party, even if upcoming elections were postponed because of the coronavirus crisis. To try to boost the economy of this district, a year ago he launched a card for his citizens to obtain discounts. Despite the lack of customers, the shopkeeper appreciates the dynamism of her mayor because she's sorry to see young people desert the country, often tired of the power of political parties. Afterwards, the mayor visits this almost empty bar. The bar's young owner is yearning to leave. When he launched this business 10 years ago, he was convinced that things could improve. But today, he's struggling to get out of here. According to World Bank statistics, a quarter of the population has left the country in the past 10 years. It's a step Noemi took only a few weeks ago. In love with Art Nouveau, this young architect never tires of strolling the streets of Brussels. So this one is the most famous one. It's Hotel Tassel from Victor Horta, and it's the first Art Nouveau building that I learned about. We, they taught it in school, so it was very interesting to come and see it in person. She's passionate and also committed to more sustainable architecture. Those beliefs were difficult to reconcile with how the sector operates in North Macedonia. The investors are looking just for profit-based uh, solutions, uh, maximizing the capacity of a site. That leads to a very low quality of life. And um, I just wanted to get away from that. The last straw for Noemi was the project called Skopje 2014. Huge patriotic monuments were built throughout the Macedonian capital in a controversial move by the government. That really killed the ambition to, for my whole generation, um, not just architects. You kind of saw all the investment that could have been done for our generation go into these monuments and buildings that are already falling apart. So that was very demotivating, yeah. Keeping young people in the country has become a national priority. Since January, a law commands that municipalities create local youth councils. Here we find the mayor of Karpash, who is the first in the country to do so. 
Around this table sit people from neighborhood associations, some high school students, and politicians. The law forces the municipality to devote at least 0.1 percent of its budget to youth. In the case of Karpash, that's 10,000 euros per year, barely enough to hire a full-time person. But for this football coach, it's already a start. Now it's turn to change the things. Um, young people must stay here, and I think that we'll be working with this mayor we have. This is a mayor who's very active on social media. Since his election two years ago, he has turned his Twitter and Instagram accounts into tools for direct democracy. I was not that experienced at that time, but I promised to them that just because I'm, I'm quite young, I have the energy and willingness to communicate with them on a daily basis. He wants to find out how to concretely improve their quality of life. He takes us to see the latest achievement of the town, a brand new playground suitable for disabled children. This is accessible for all kinds of, of uh, wheelchairs. But the mayor also knows that the big issue for the country in the coming weeks is not local, it's in Brussels. North Macedonia recently went so far as to change its name to meet criteria for joining the European Union. This should be recognized by all European Union member states, and they should open the way for North Macedonia towards the, the accession with the European Union. I cannot think of any other alternative. But these hopes have been repeatedly dashed by EU countries. North Macedonia has been waiting at the door of the European Union for 15 years now. Noemi was a child when her country obtained candidate status. For a lot of people in my generation, it's just like a fairy tale thing. It's something that might happen and it would be really nice, but we, I don't know if we still believe that it's going to catch our generation. However, she's an environmentalist at heart and sees a big potential advantage to align with European environmental standards. Living in Brussels, she regularly enjoys the outdoors and these woods a stone's throw from the city center. You can see some animals in summer, you know, like birds around and squirrels and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big jewel of the city. In Skopje, she had abandoned the idea of doing yoga outdoors. Too much pollution. She ended up dedicating her walks there to garbage collection. A worst problem for me is the desperation of the situation that you can't just clean it up and it goes away. You need to change the mentality of the people. Along the roads of North Macedonia, garbage is everywhere. We're in the south of the country now, near Negotino, where Elena spotted this unauthorized dump. Unfortunately, a very common scene. In Macedonia, there is no uh, real system that uh, perfectly works uh, for uh, waste management. Being a part of EU, of course, will help us uh, integrate the regulations that EU has ar uh, around and about trash and waste management, but it's still our responsibility at the same time to find a way to uh, manage our internal issues as well. But in this region, the construction of an RDF production unit, a fuel produced from waste, is not being welcomed. Danova finds members of a local association who do not want this project, which is suspended for the moment. They think the location has been poorly chosen, and they also fear new pollution from the use of this fuel. This RDF fuel is extremely toxic fuel, and not using the filters in the factories where we have stoves that use the RDF fuel is going to literally kill everything living in the area where it's being used. But most of her activism is in the capital. 
For instance, every Friday evening she takes part in the worldwide student strikes for climate. She herself is no longer at university. She works in a flexible job that allows her to fully engage in environmental activism. Today, she invites passers-by to write words on this sign. That's painful for Denova to hear. This is the reality. <laughs> but she's at least encouraged by the environmental awareness of young people. I think that they're doing great work because education is key and it's the only way out of this blind mentality that we are having in this day. We are stubborn. Still, the population doesn't believe it exists and it need, it, we have a lot of, to do. Nobody's doing anything about it, even though people are talking about it. This is a generation that has decided to take charge of its own destiny without waiting for Brussels to make decisions. But many of them hope that one day they'll wake up as members of the European Union. Until the sea went dry I could have missed Crow Jane Until I saw her